All right. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to another uh, episode of God is Love. Um, brought to you by Hip Hop with Christ. And of course, I'm your host, Jug Honey Love. And um, as uh, you all know, and for those who do not know, we are on every week on a Sunday night here in the Philippines. So depending on where you are all over the world, um, that's not a problem because you can always watch this anytime it's convenient for you. You will find a video, of course, saved on the Hip Hop with Christ page and also on YouTube. And if you've seen um, the poster, um, the posters that I share out, you'll be able to see uh, inf information there, the links where you can actually uh, catch the video or the audio streaming. It's also on the caption. All right. so. Now, tonight is actually a very exciting time for me because uh, I started this show um, November of last year only. I've been wanting to do this for a couple of years already, but I didn't have the courage until just last year. So uh, this journey that I am on right now, uh, excuse me, my guest tonight is actually one 
a person, a very important person who has actually been the reason or one of the reasons that I'm uh, able to successfully go back to this journey of mine, which honestly speaking, I left many years ago. Not really left consciously, but subconsciously because I went through the same things, uh, you know, going through trying to pursue my dreams or my own personal goals and all that. So before I introduce my guest this evening, I'd just like to uh, acknowledge the people who have been commenting here. Uh, good evening, Pastor Pastora Lynn, of course, and uh, Pastor Stephen Lewis. Good morning to you, to the, um, the USA. And Simon Brada, wow, Simon, it's been a long time. Um, I'm glad you were able to catch this post or this, this uh, broadcast. So if you are watching, please don't you know, hesitate. Please do leave a comment so I know that you are watching. And good evening, ma mother, mother dear, moms. Thank you for uh, catching this video. I'd like you to meet my special guest this evening. He is um, the head pastor of the church that I started attending in 2017. It was called Ignite Church at the time. Um, but, you know, it's a long story how I got to know uh, Pastor Glenn Blakeney. Um, I actually had a guest here uh, in season one um, that was uh, Carlo Benavides, who's actually the guy I met. He's, he, he was also a pastor. Um, I met him in one of our gigs. Um, you know, we, we don't even know how he, he found out about us as performers. And one thing led to another. We didn't even know that we, we were both Christians. He invited us to go to his church. And, you know, one thing led to another. That's how we met my guest this evening, Pastor Glenn Blakeney. And everybody else who, um, all the spiritual leaders and the pastors that I have been very uh, blessed with to have met in my life since 2017. So let's not make this any um, longer now. I think my introduction is uh, will suffice. Here it is, or here he is, Pastor Glenn Blakeney. Let me get you in here. Hi, Pastor. Hello. Can you hear me? I can good. hear you just fine. How are you? Good Hi. evening to you. Yeah, good morning here in North America. Yeah. All right. Yes. Thank you. Let me remove this. Uh, please stand by here for a second. All right. Okay. There you go. Um, yeah. First of all, I'd like to thank you, Pastor, for finally, you know, be, being able to guest. Uh, I know it's not easy. You're a very busy man. Um, oh. Plus the the time difference is not really uh, easy to work with. So thank you again for allowing yourself to be part of this special show that I'm trying to you know, do uh, yeah. well, courageously. You are, you are doing it and you're doing a great job. Thank you, Jug. It's an Thank honor you. to be here and uh, to share the word of the Lord and just a little bit of my journey, my testimony. Of course, we all have a journey that we're on. Yes. Some, some um, of us have been on it longer, I guess. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, as I was mentioning earlier, uh, you know, I'm what you call, some people say that I have backslidden, you know, so when I came back to really, you know, being active and doing what I'm supposed to be doing as a Christian, which really um, just started again, like 2014, 15. Now imagine that I didn't, I didn't really meet you until 2017. So there was three years of struggle there. Okay. But I, I, I always knew deep inside that this is what I really wanted to do. And uh, I'm really, wow. really happy that I finally, um, you know, found you guys <laughs> to, to really uh, help me out here with my spiritual growth, wow. you know, with my walk uh, in Christianity. Yeah. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, Pastor John. Jonathan Montes is also watching us tonight. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, to the viewers, this show is called God is Love. It's very simple. It's really just real life stories of our guests, how God has really shown his love in their lives. So, you know, rather than because I'm not a preacher, um, I thought it best to use my platform to be able to just share real life stories so that everybody who doesn't know anything about Christianity 
might be blessed and convinced and, and, and really see for themselves and hear for themselves uh, the stories. And, and, and the amazing thing tonight um, to everybody listening and watching is that hearing the personal journey of pastors, you know, spiritual leaders who have been on their journey or at for 30 years maybe, I don't know how long you've been doing this already, Pastor. I mean, it's always going to be a different perspective. You know, it's always going right. to be very, in my opinion, very deep. And um, and that's something that I really want to share with everybody that is watching. All right. So before I start, is there anything that you want to please say, whatever you want to say now? Uh, this is not about the questions. Take well, this moment. No, I just just acknowledge uh, you and and you know to see the transformation that you've gone through jug in the few years that we've known one another it's amazing you know god has really uh, been doing a, a transforming work in your life and is so excited to see and how you're using your platform now to give glory to god and to spread the word that god is love and thank you <laughs> and I love I love the song in the beginning. I've heard that song many times. I don't understand yes. the Tagalog, but uh, it I like it. it's cool. <laughs> um, let me translate it for you. Di mo lang pansin means uh, you just don't know. That's the title. Really, you just don't know. And then the song where he pretty much talks about how you don't know. You're probably not knowing that he is just there for you. So wow. we talk about God and Jesus, of course, in that yeah. song, you know, right. being the Alpha and the Omega and, yeah. uh, you know, the how God is really longing for our love because he loves us. That's the story of the song. And you're going to be amazed, Pastor, because I co-wrote that song in 2003. And so, wow, okay. Wow. It, it's actually, wow. yeah, the only uh, Christian gospel song that I ever wrote myself so have faith is the second that i'm recorded but right. Lang Pansin is the first one yeah. so like i said right you know i i i was on that journey and then it just stopped yes right yeah um, i understand you know? i understand <laughs> so yeah. um you know i think i've already i i understand a lot now and um I'm fine, you know. I'm I'm gonna continue pursuing my dreams with music, and then just keep doing this uh, to glorify the Lord and and help other people in my community to really understand why right. we're all doing this, you know, why we're really so um, excited and really right. uh, bold about really talking about the realness. Uh, you know the truth yeah. the gospel of jesus christ you know the gospel of salvation so amen um yes i'm, I'm just every sunday night i have this smile on my face <laughs> and i wish i could be smiling like this every day of the week because when i do the show it really is something different so i'm okay. really really happy thank you so much pastor wow all right that says a um, lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh Hello. Uh, yes, thank you so much, Pastor Lynn, uh, for being proud of me. Uh, you know, I've always looked up to you guys. Thank you so much for your blessing. And of course, Pastor Jong and DJ Angela, thank you for always watching. Okay, so let's begin. All right, so the very first question, the basic question, you know, really, is since this is a very personal show, it's testimonies, why did you agree to guess in the show, Pastor? Well, first of all, because I wanted to hang out with you. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's always going to work. Yeah, the last time we hung out was, what, 2018, when we went to Planet Shakers. Wow, was it that long ago? I think that was January. So, yes. So, yeah. Three years, right? So. That long? I oh, no. 2019, no. maybe. 19, oh, yeah. 2019, yeah. so two years. Two yeah. years okay. Yes. Right. And I think that was the last time we were in the Philippines, even. I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think so. I think so. Crazy pandemic. And then also living on the <laughs> other side of the world. So, yes, yes. But yeah, no, um, I mean, look, look I, I obviously wanted to support you and what you're doing and with uh, 
you know, the platform God has given you to encourage people. And that's what it's all about. I just want to spread the love that Jesus is real. It's not about religion or a denomination, but it's about Amen. the person of Jesus Christ. He is the only founder of a religion, so to speak, that still lives, <laughs> you know, all the yes. other other teachers and so forth and gurus and uh, they are rabbis, whatever, they're dead, but Jesus rose from the grave. He's alive. And I yes. just always, uh, you know, the proof is, is in the fruit, the transformation of lives. And, and yes. yet we know that there are people around the world that um, profess to be Christians that really don't know him. It's, it's still religion and uh, traditions, right? And I know there's a lot of a lot of people in the Philippines that have been raised in religious backgrounds, but they never really um, knew the Lord, or maybe they don't know the Lord yet. Yes. So I, I just wanna, I just wanna make it real. I just wanna see um, people come to know the Lord because wow, He has such an amazing plan and. And the, you know, the salvation that he offers changes us. And so, yeah, I mean, to be able to come on this program and, and share that is such an honor. But yet it's also responsibility, right? Because the Bible yes. says that we are to preach the gospel to all people. Yes. So, and of course, uh, we love the Pinoy. We love the Filipinos people. Yes. Yeah. So it's an honor. Um, thank you so much for, uh, you know, mentioning early on that this is not about religion, but rather a personal relationship. Uh, well, for coming from that word, it, it goes both ways, right? It's not, you know, just, you know, God in throwing us the love that he has. We also have a role to play. And um, it's also wonderful that you mentioned that uh, it is also a responsibility for us to really talk about this. Um and and that is really honestly speaking, that was one of the the thoughts that I really was hesitant about for myself because I didn't feel at the time when I wanted to do a show like this that I was worthy or you know that I was even uh, qualified you know stuff like that. But the pandemic happened and you know I just got to know and know from your teachings and the other pastors that really. And I knew this even before that as a Christian, we do have a responsibility to speak about, you know, the Lord. Um, it really is our basic responsibility. And so I, I, you know, finally took it upon myself to do this. But um, to hear from you, a pastor, an apostle, is is, is really going to solidify this this show. And um, so thank you again. Um, my honor. It, it is my honor to have you here. Um Okay, so now here is uh, question number two, right? This is the personal question because from the people that I've met here in the Philippines and even in the U.S. or even from other countries that I've got, you know, gotten the opportunity to converse with, uh, you know, when it comes to this, right. uh, some of them think that we become Christians or born again Christians because something devastating happened in our life or in our right. lives right. no so that's the question is there was there anything that happened in your life that made you decide you know notice how i use the word decide because it really is a decision mm -hmm. god gave us a choice right uh, right yeah so that was was there uh, anything that happened to you yeah. pastor glenn or you know tell sure. us a little bit about that during the years yeah well definitely something happened <laughs> but it wasn't um it wasn't a terrible thing it was the opposite you know the bible talks about it says taste and see that the lord is good and yes. and what happened to me when i was um, a kid like a young child my mom became a born again believer you know and she through the testimony basically of my aunt and and others she became a born again believer and radically was changed. And at that time she began to take me as a child to, to go to not only just churches, but conferences and, and meetings. And 
during that time, way back in history, uh, <laughs> there was a yeah. lot of miracles happening, like powerful miracles. And it wasn't based on, well, what church do you go to? It was people from all different yeah. cross sections of Christianity and denominations. And, you know, there were Pentecostals, Baptists, Methodists, Catholics, yeah. all sorts of uh, backgrounds and people were really experiencing the Lord. So yes. I was healed as a child um, and was part of, I went to some meetings with a great um, evangelist, the late Catherine Kuhlman, if you guys look her up, like powerful stuff, if you've never heard of her. She's on YouTube, you can see some of the videos from like the 70s and stuff. But that really changed my life. I encountered the goodness of God, you know, and it says in Romans chapter two, verse four, the kindness or the goodness of God leads to repentance. And a lot of people, they think like God's angry with them and uh, he's, you know, he's trying to mess up their lives in order that they'll, you know, turn to him, right? Obviously. And, but the Bible says that the way of the transgressor is hard. And basically what that means is that there's, we're all on a, before we know the Lord, you know, life isn't easy. It's just sometimes life can be very difficult. And no matter how much money you have, how much fame or prestige you have, there's always something deep down within you that realizes there's more to life than just the stuff, than the material realm. So for me, because I encountered the Lord at a young age, what happened was there was this deep longing in me to know more about God, to experience him, to really know him. And so I went through my teenage years and I got all messed up in the world. You know, I did a lot of things I shouldn't have done. And, yes. and I really, I really did. I made a mess of my life, but I started changing and it was just kind of like, I just went, I don't want to do this anymore. And so I, I started being a good person kind of, you know, I mean, it wasn't that good, but <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was doing, yeah, I was, I mean, look, I was a pretty nice guy, I think overall, but um, I wasn't really yeah. mean to people. But, you know, I was, I was living a selfish life still. And so I, I, I just kind of went, you know what? I, there's this empty feeling in me. There's something missing in my life. And, you know, I think it was St. Augustine who said that uh, there's a God-shaped vacuum or void in each person. And God just changed my life. And and, and when I re started reaching out to the Lord, it was, it was a process. It was a journey. It wasn't just like, and I was just saying like, God, make, make yourself known to me, reveal yourself to me. And all of a sudden I just started to, my desire started to change. And then I had this encounter with God where I just said, Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and you rose again. You're alive. And the Bible says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So I said, Lord, I, I ask you to forgive me of my sins and just come and change my life. And he did. And then later on, um, you know, I experienced something that we call the baptism with the Holy Spirit. And and I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and in the book of Acts chapter one, verse eight, it says the purpose for the filling of the Holy Spirit is that you will receive power. And God gave me power, power to, it says power to be witnesses unto me, Jesus said. And so mm. that power is actually to bring change to our lives because the way we witness, you know, shine our light is first and foremost by the change in our lives. Like people look mm. at us and they say, wow, there's something different about that person, right? I mean, it's not like, well, I'm just a good person who's trying to keep all these rules and, and not do these bad things. No, it's totally different. It's a relationship. His presence, his power, his light, his glory is in me because of the Holy Spirit. 
and it, it just began to change me, you know? So for me, it wasn't like anything negative or devastating that really, it was just like, I just knew there's more. There's yes. so much more. I had tasted it. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, I don't know if you like ice cream. But I do. You do. <laughs> I had a feeling you would. But, if, you know, some you taste a little bit of ice cream. And, and if it's really good ice cream, what do you want to do? You want to eat more, eat right? More. Yeah. yeah. More. <laughs> <laughs> and, and sometimes too much. But, but the point is, it's like the Lord. If you've tasted of the Lord and you know his goodness, then you, you, there's something in us that says, I want to know him. I really want to experience him. So that's what happened to me. And I just said, look, you know, this is, he's so real. And, and I've encountered his power. Like I said, I was healed, but I knew what it meant to have the presence of the Lord come upon me. And I just, I just started uh, slowly shifting away from the world and moving closer to God. And, you know, the Bible says, Jesus said this, he said, no man can come to me unless the yes. father who sent me draws him. So yes. there was a drawing that was taking place. It was the father was drawing me. And, yes. and that's what happened. And I just, because I knew there was more. So I just want to say this, like some people think, well, you got to have a really terrible life, difficult life in order to turn to God. And and absolutely, the Lord wants to comfort us. He wants to heal us, give us peace, and even help us with our problems and our challenges. But there are people in the world that are very uh, wealthy. They, they, in the natural, everything seems to be going well for them, but inside they're empty. Yes. And there's and every single person in the world is going to stand before God one day. We're going to be judged. And the question he's going to ask us is not, or questions, isn't about, you know, did you do this? Did you do that? But it's it's going to be about first and foremost is, did you accept the gospel? Yes. Did you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? Did you repent and and, and allow him to change you and turn your life over to him. Because it doesn't matter how, how good we are or how bad we are. We all, the Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory sure. of God. Every one of us is a sinner. Every one of us. Some of us may be more, worse sinners than others, but we're all sinners. We all need a savior. And it's not just that he wants to forgive us. But he wants to bless us. He wants to give us his peace and his joy. And he wants to forgive us. Absolutely. So I was just drawn. Like I knew there was more. There was more to life. There was more to what I had experienced. And, and I knew it was the Lord. I knew it was him. And and that's I think that's um, a good analogy of that is the fire. Right? Mm. The fire within you is really burning. And when you feel that. Mm. you know yeah. you're really gonna you're really gonna work towards that um just to glorify the lord and do what he wants you to do um the transformation as as pastor Lynn said yeah and uh i'd like to say hello to one of my artists prince he's also cool. watching cool very nice thank you prince, prince. for watching yeah. hey prince um yes um yes yeah, so all right so so you're how many? I had twelve guests in the first season. You're third now, so there's like a fifteen. Wow. Yeah, fifteen guests. So some of them are like you. You know, you grew up in a uh, in a as a child. You went to church because your family were Christians. The others did go through a uh, you know devastation or you know unfortunate events in their lives, and the others were Catholic or are still Catholic. So sure. basically wanted to, as you, it's a good thing also that you mentioned about the, um, that event you went to before. It didn't matter what denomination, there were also Catholics present as mm -hmm. long as they were, you know, experiencing uh, God, you know, the miracles mm -hmm. in their lives. And, and that's what this show really is about. Um, it's really getting in touch with the people who have something to share that's, that's genuine, that's authentic. 
Right. Uh, we just really want to be authentic here because, um, as you mentioned, we're all sinners and everything at the end, we all will be judged. And it's really the ones that that is in our heart that's going to matter. So the authenticity and and the journey of going through that. Um, thank you for sharing uh, that part of your life, uh, Pastor Glenn. Um, welcome. All right. So now here. We have to talk talk about faith, of course, right? So, um, as when I guested Pastor Steve here a few weeks ago, he mentioned about the right type of faith, of course, because this is the question I threw at him, which is the same that I'm asking you now. Do you think you could have survived all your trials? And you know, you know how the the enemy will keep on knocking on your door and trying to distract you. You think you would have been able to survive all those without? faith or the right type of faith right the the short answer is no i don't think so um but i i was thinking uh actually last night it's morning here very and but i was thinking good morning (laughs) for sometimes you know we tell i've heard preachers and pastors and others say even other uh christians you know come to jesus and he's going to help you and it's like he's going to solve all your problems and and even though of course god will help us um sometimes when we turn to the lord things in our life can can change and become even more difficult but in a different way and what i mean by that is okay so all of a sudden now you're following jesus and you don't want to go do the things you used to do so it talks about in first Peter chapter um, four about how what happens is some of your old friends, they just kind of like, hey, man, you know, I don't want to uh, we don't want to hang out with you anymore. What's what's happened to you? Why are you like that? And you, you might have people that persecute you, you know, because now you're following Jesus. And and so that can that can be a challenge. Um and then because we are all in a sense on a journey to wholeness to be more like christ sometimes especially as a pastor you deal with a lot of broken people people that have problems and so sometimes you go through difficult times with people getting upset with you you know they get angry with you they lie about you and some people just they just want to destroy you because you know ultimately especially if the devil is really um you know working through them if they've really yielded themselves to him and there are people that are like that so you know we've gone through challenges and difficulties in life um that have have been totally different like they're not like the world's challenges like you know yes yes but but it's kind of like what jesus says is when you suffer for righteousness or when you're persecuted for righteousness and and so so you got kind of like the battle zone is there's there's really three different battle zones number one there's like what happens in your mind sometimes our own thoughts like you mentioned earlier about how we struggle with feeling worthy, like, you know, and, and we have to, we have to change that because what happens is the Bible says very clear that we are worthy, not because of who we are, what we've done, but because Jesus, his blood was shed on the cross. And the Bible says that he's forgiven us. He's cleansed us. He's made us righteous. So we're worthy because of what he did and he's brought us into his family. And then there's, Amen. there's the world, you know, the Bible talks about the, the world uh, and how Satan is the prince or the ruler of the world. Jesus talked about that in John chapter 12 and the world means the system that is, you know, governed by the devil, the darkness, uh, in, on the earth and so you've got spiritual darkness you know you've got de- the devil there's demons and all of this stuff is happening around us trying to destroy us the bible says that the the devil is like a roaring lion he goes around seeking whom he can devour 
And then yes. the the other challenge is actually um, people. You know, like I said, you people maybe that come against you in different ways, and and I realize that you know we're we're work we all work through things. We have to, but ultimately, uh, I I think faith is is the the biblical definition of faith what the bible calls faith is trusting god it's depending on god you know proverbs 3 5 and 6 says trust in the lord with all your heart Amen. and lean not on your own understanding. understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths or he'll make your path straight so that's the truth and so you know for me I had to trust God because not only did I need to trust him and have faith in him to, to um, bring me through life, but also to do what he has called me to do. Because when he calls you to step out and to do something for his namesake, to give glory to him, the devil's not going to be happy about that. He's going to yes. try to shut us down and stop us in different ways. And, you know, like I said, it have there are different uh, angles that that he uses against us, and so we just have to keep believing God, trusting God, having faith. And when we trust Him, we depend upon the Lord, and that's what faith is. Clinging to Him is what the word means. Then what ends up happening is we find strength, supernatural power, and strength. And I love awesome. Paul said this in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9. Paul the apostle said this. He said, we have the sentence of death in ourselves that we might not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. Yes. And he was talking about the struggle, the struggle yes. that he was going through. True story. You know, it's real. The struggle is real. And he was saying, look, I'm being persecuted. There are people that hate me because of what I'm doing. And he said, but yet he was seeing so many people come to Christ, so many lives changed. And that's why the enemy was angry. And he said, look, this is the only way I can keep going is because the Lord is teaching me on my own. I'm not strong enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not rich enough. I don't have what it takes. I don't have the resources externally or internally, but what I have is the supernatural resurrection power of Jesus Christ. You know, Romans 8, 11 says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in us. And so as we have faith and we trust and we lean on him, we have the sentence of death in ourselves that so we will not trust in ourselves. So we will not trust in ourselves, but we will trust in him, the one who raised Jesus from the dead, the one who resurrects the dead. And so my faith journey has been ongoing. In fact, I'm in a place right now, Lynn and I, where we're trusting God. Like we, we, he, the Lord's really saying, you got to lean hard on me right now. And, yes. and so we're trusting him. You know, sometimes people think that you've been in ministry for years and, you know, they think, well, you're from a certain part of the world and you got everything's easy over there, you know, like, but it's not true. It's not true. Everyone has challenges and struggles and, and we go through things and continue to go through things, but we're pressing forward to obey the Lord, to do what he's called us to do. And yes. during the journey, we make mistakes, no doubt about it. Sometimes um, we don't realize it until years later, but ultimately the faith that God gives to us brings us through everything that we, Amen. every obstacle we'll face. He's going to, that faith will bring us through uh, trust and dependence on his grace, his strength, his power. Amen. Um, you know, I'd like to add on to that. Uh, you know, if you think about it, you know, he gave Jesus to die for our sins to save us, right? To redeem us. So basically, you know, and so it, it just, if you think about it, having faith and believing in him should be easy because right. he he did all that, you know, he, he right. through his grace, he provided Jesus. He came in the person of Jesus to yeah. save us. 
to cleanse us. Um, and, and, and the Holy Spirit is there too, right? Yes. And, and all we have to do is really trust. Uh, yeah. And it, it becomes difficult because of the enemy. Um, and I think a lot of people don't understand that. Uh, you know, yeah. during this time, it's so fitting that you and I are talking tonight, Pastor, this today, because it's Palm Sunday, right? So it's, right. you know, Holy Week. Um, yeah. And um, it's really that week where, you know, he, even the apostles started to doubt, you know, what's going to happen to them when Jesus, you know, leaves and all that. Mm -hmm. So even the apostles had doubts. So we're all going to have doubts. Yeah. And um, it's really how strong are we going to hold on to that and really show how we depend on, on God and his promise to us through Jesus, right? Yeah. Is having that faith. We, yeah. we also have to remember the grace that he gave to us. Uh, Amen. Uh, there's a book I'm reading, um, The Unsearchable Riches of Christ. It's uh, something about grace. Yeah. And um, yeah. it... it it's it basically talks about how we're like on death row you know from the time of, of genesis when adam and eve made that you know that huge no-no <laughs> they weren't supposed to do they did so we became we we were into we we suddenly became um part of a broken world when as you always mention in your teachings um god always intended earth to be perfect you know, heaven on earth, right? It was always meant to be that way. But then, you know, Genesis or that Adam and Eve thing happened uh, because of uh, the temptation of the enemy or the devil. Right. So we're like on death row. So here God God shows us it was grace. In Tagalog, grace is like, um, what's a good term, Tagalog? Uh, DJ Angela, do you mind uh, if you know the, the Tagalog word for grace, would you mind typing that on the comment if you're still watching? Or anybody who understands Tagalog? Um, it's like he gave us another chance. And then for us to even like reject that, mm. and we and we know this because a lot of us get we grow up in Catholic school or get to watch these movies and TV shows every holy week, Pastor. Every right. holy week. When so. I was a child here. Um, they wouldn't have any other show on television except about Jesus. Wow. Holy Week. That was all you could watch on TV back then. Everything was like shut. It's the same show, the same show. You know, Moses and the Ten Commandments and then, wow. you know, Jesus and the Garden, uh, the, the crucifixion and all yeah. that. So we know that. And 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 I, I'm, I'm reiterating this point is because when we try to reject what god did for us it's really the enemy trying to really get us out of that realm that god you know is asking us to be part of and and this is where our our um, contribution comes in as part of the personal relationship right being having a personal relationship with jesus um and and i i, I is there a way for you to like emphasize more pastor how um this is not religion. Could you talk about that more right now? Like, this is not about religion. This is not about the rules of the law. I mean, there's so much to talk about, even from the Pharisees and how Jesus spoke to Nicodemus and everything. Please, right. uh, before we go to the next question, just give us a differentiation of being a Christian as opposed to what is religion. Right. Well, yeah, I would first of all say if you want to really learn and know more about um, what God intended for your life, then read the Gospels. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Mark is, um, you know, the shortest Gospel with 16 chapters. And it's very fast moving, you know. It's like an, it's like an action movie where you just go from one scene to another to another. And... And it's very powerful because it shows how Jesus came to the earth. And Jesus, when he came as the son of God, he came down from heaven as God, the second person of the Trinity. He comes down from heaven as born of the Virgin Mary. And then he, you know, as a, as a person, as a human, 
And then at, at the age of 30, he begins his ministry and he starts healing the sick, driving out demons, um, you know, sh showing the love of God, teaching them um, who God is, all about God, about his father. He came to actually reveal the father is what it says. Yes. And and then, of course, he preached the kingdom, the Bible says. I, I, I just actually um, published two books this week. And and Congrats. one of the books is is on uh, the kingdom, and it's kind of these are smaller books right now. I'm doing a a larger book um, that'll be out later this year. But the point is, the kingdom. There is a kingdom, and Jesus said, "My kingdom is not of this world. It's invisible." So, if you want to know what he's like, if you're really serious, start reading the Gospels, and what you will see is that Jesus didn't talk about church so much. I mean, he did He did talk about church, but not in the way we do today. Yeah. The, the church that he spoke about meant the people who were the coming together of God's people to worship him and, and so on and to, you know, take the gospel to the nations. But he, he never joined the established religious uh, denominations of his day. In fact, the denominations, so to speak, of his day rejected him. Okay. Yes. And, and they were criticizing him, but he came and he did something completely different. And he began to reveal who his father was because the religious leaders of his day, you know, they, they taught about God and they told the people about God, but they didn't understand who God really is or was. And so he, he, you know, they would talk about, well, basically, oh, you got to do this. You got to do that. If not, God's going to destroy you. And, and the Bible says that God is love and perfect love casts out fear because fear has to do with torment or the fear that I'm going to be judged, you know, and when Adam and Eve sinned, what happened was they were, they turned away from God. They were afraid of God, but Jesus came to bring us back to that relationship with him to remove that fear and the shame and, and so on. And so by, by showing us that God is love, that he, he is a perfect father that loves us and he wants to change us. You know, one time I was preaching, in a nation where they, it's a different religion over there. And, and I was talking about God being father and how the Bible teaches that. And these people were like, no, God is a judge. He's holy. He wants to, you know, if we, if we slip up, if we mess up, he's going to basically destroy us and, and send us to hell, to, you know? And I said, no, he wants to he wants to forgive you and he's love he's not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance is what the bible says in second peter 3 verse 9 so jesus said this in john 17 verse 3 he said he was praying to the father and he said this this he said and this is eternal life that they may know you the only true god and Jesus Christ, whom you sent. So when it says this is eternal life, that's what we're talking about. God doesn't offer to us church membership, you know, religious affiliation, um, a bunch of rules and regulations. He offers to us eternal life. He offers to us a family, a, a spiritual family. He offers to us identity. Uh, a sense that we are his children. We were creating his image and likeness. And no matter how far away we've gotten from that and went astray, you know, and, and did things we shouldn't do, we're still his kids. But he wants us to be born again, to really move out of the darkness into the light. Colossians chapter one, I think it's verse 13, says that when we believe in Christ, we come out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son. So there's, there is a hell, there is, there is a place people are going to go there if they don't know Jesus. But the truth is he doesn't want anyone to perish and he offers eternal life. And that life, the word that is translated, uh, know that they may know you, the only true God. Let me explain what it means. You know, the Bible was written in two primary languages, 
Hebrew and Greek. Hebrew is the Old Testament. Greek is the New Testament. And the in both languages, the word for know speaks about knowing by experience. It isn't like just yes. intellectually, like, well, you know what? I, I believe this. I believe that. No, it says in the book of James, even the demons believe and tremble. They believe in God. But yes. it means to know personally, to know experientially. And God wants you to know him that way. He invites us into that type of relationship. And then as we know him, this is the interesting part. Jesus said in John 16, he said, when I, he was about to leave the earth, we're talking about Holy Week. And he, he was going to go to the cross and be crucified. And of course, he'll be raised to life and the third day, and then he would ascend to the Father. And he said, I'm not going to leave you guys like your orphans. He said, I'm going to send another comforter. This is what it says in the Gospel of John. He said, the Holy Spirit. And he said, when the Holy Spirit comes, one of the things he's going to do is he's going to lead you into all truth. I think that's John Amen. 16. He's going to lead you into all truth. So that's what happens. You know, when you know God, he'll start teaching you the truth. And maybe some things that we were taught, depending on our religious background or if we didn't have a religious background at all, or sometimes even just some of our own ideas, they're false, you know, and it's not, it's not, a, it's not an accurate narrative of who God is. It's a false narrative. And he begins to show us the truth. Oh, this is who God is. This is what God expects of us. This is what salvation is. This is what it means to be his children, to follow him, to be disciples and so on. And he changes us from the inside out. He doesn't give us a bunch of rules and say, do this, do that, do it, and don't do that. He says, come to me. Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are heavy burdened. You know, he said, I'll give you rest. Come to me. And, and when we come to him, he begins to teach us what God wants us how he wants us to live. He changes our desires even and yes. gives us new desires, good desires, you know? And so it's a powerful thing. It's not about what church or what denomination. In fact, let me just say this. And, and some people, um, I sure, I'm sure are going to really appreciate this. Some churches, some denominations have misrepresented who God really is. You know, the Pharisees misrepresented. They presented a caricature. They presented a, an image of God. That's not who he was. Jesus said, no, y'all got it wrong. You don't get it. That's not who my father is. He's not like that. My father, he's a good father. He loves, he cares. He, wa he wants everyone to know him and to be restored. So he presented, or we might even say represented, represent like a representative, right? He represented who the father really is, the accurate, the true father, you know? You know, yes. <laughs> I jokingly say sometimes, yes. you can know father God or you can know the Godfather, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't want to know the Godfather, I mean, I want to oh, know yeah. father God. So, yes. So it, that's what Jesus came to do, and, and it's powerful to know him, to know him, to really know him. So it's not about what do I need to give money, do I need to go to church? No, the question is, do you know him? Do yes. you really know him? Because he is saying, I want you to know me. And people that are part of this broadcast tonight, they can, they can just make that decision in their heart. Like you said earlier, Jug, it is. God gives us a free will to choose. The Bible says, choose this day whom you will serve. So, so we have to make that choice. And, you know, Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will, we will follow the Lord. We choose the Lord. So people are watching this, guys. It's simply this. Jesus died for you, that you can be born again, that you can know eternal life. And when he says born again, what that means is spiritually you become alive. Your yes. spirit comes to life. And, and you just need to pray in your heart, wherever you are. You don't need to go to a cathedral or a church building or anything. You just pray in your heart 
and just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I, I know you died on the cross and you rose again to forgive the sins of the world, but forgive me, Lord, but also come into my life and change me. Make yourself real to me. Fill me with your power and give me the strength and the wisdom and the desire to follow you. Then start reading your Bible. Start praying, talking to God like it's a relationship. And do find a good church that teaches the Bible, that really teaches the word of God. And don't worry about everything else. You know, God will God will lead you. He'll, he'll sort out any mess in your life. He'll teach you. He loves you. He cares for you. It's like a child when... You know, when a ch baby is born, we don't expect that baby to yeah. mm -hmm. uh, be act like they're 21 years old or whatever. You know, I mean, we know there's a growing up process and and that's the way God is, too. He knows that we're we're growing up and and uh, we start off like spiritual infants, but, yes. but he'll he'll help us and we'll begin to change and we'll begin to grow and, and become more mature. Thank you for that, Pastor. Um, I think um, it was really important for me to ask that question because a lot of people that I know, are, you know, when, when we talk about Jesus, they automatically associate Jesus with religion. Right. And, and unfortunately, as you mentioned earlier, you know, they don't have good experiences with religion yeah. because they, they look at religion as, you know, a bunch of rules, uh, Right. made by men, a tradition, like really old steps that have to be made and done. So basically an analogy would be like this, right? Um, if you were in a relationship, would you want to be doing steps like a robot, <laughs> right? It, it's not going to be done that way. It's never going to be authentic. So right. yeah. we, we, we want to be, what I'd like to be able to accomplish with this show that I'm doing is really to identify the difference that Jesus is not, should not be associated with religion. Yeah. And as you mentioned, so that's, that's wonderful that you emphasize that, um, that he didn't, you know, he, he was debating or even like opposing the, the Pharisees. And, and if, if I think Catholics know this when he got angry at the temple because they were selling at the yeah. temple, they made it a marketplace. Right. And uh, and they forgot to show respect that that was, you know, the home, right. the, the house of, of, of the Lord, you know, and even he showed his anger. Um, well, you know what? Can I just comment on that? Sure. So, Please. yeah, when you read that and he went into the temple and they were buying and selling, you know, and money changers and so on, buying and selling the, the sacrifices, you know, it was really about what they were doing to the people and they were manipulating and extorting the people. They were taking advantage of the people mm -hmm. and that's what God hates more than anything else. You know what I mean? Like the yes. temple was a building in back in, in Jesus day, even there was a physical temple obviously, but yes. he actually said the temple would be destroyed. And it was in AD 70, when the Romans came to Jerusalem, they destroyed the temple and there's not been a temple since then. But then the Bible says this, that now we are the temple. Yes. Uh, yes. First Corinthians three sixteen says, do you not know? And it's basically the word is plural. Do you, in other words, do you not all know? that you yourselves are the temple, you know, and our body is the temple. Yes. Well, so, you know, that's what God, God loves people. He didn't care about buildings and, and temples and all of those, you know, basilicas and all that stuff. Like yeah. one day it's going to all be burned up. God loves people. He wants yes, yes. to live in people. He wants people to know him. And that's the most important thing. And I think he's uh, from the very beginning when he, uh, you know, when when he came as a baby, the simplicity of his life of being born in a manger, you know, I mean, it, everything has been displayed from the start uh, when he first came, right. and um, you know, and and what you mentioned, what what they were doing to the people is the opposite of loving your neighbor. Right. And let me just add on a little bit to about God's love, right? Um, you know, God doesn't change what he said before, 
right? As he as you thought, he he's just, he's fair, but he also loves us. So he didn't want to like you know not punish those who sinned, right? Because yeah. he's just, he's just, but then yeah. he loves us, and to be able to display love is grace. Yeah. And how was how did he do that? for this time like after doing Noah's ark and Jonah and every all these other things throughout time what what is this last thing that he did for us now and 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 he still loves us that he's giving us a choice right in Jesus so that's it through Jesus Christ God gave us grace justice love yeah redemption i mean it's just truly amazing and i cannot even understand how we cannot embrace that i mean if we really 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 uh think about it and really study the bible the word sure. so thank you for that uh pastor um always enlightening enlightening uh when you explain okay so i think i know the answer to this but it's be it's better if you mention it you might have new new stuff going on what is your most important mission goal and mission in life yeah i guess goal is short term and mission is really yeah sure um well yeah i mean the the mission is to see people reconciled to god that every person in the world you know just over 7.8 billion people in the world and the bible says this that um we are to make disciples of the nations that's what jesus said in matthew 28 19. And the word nations means people groups. And, you know, when you look at um, how many nations or countries are there in the world? Well, United Nations says, I believe the most recent figures are 195 countries. They do not include Taiwan. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so anyway, uh, that's just a side note. But you know, the, the Olympics, they they have like over 200 countries. But the no, the word nations literally means ethnic. So ethnic means people groups. And depending on, uh, you know, how you categorize it, there's about one study says on it's called joshuaproject.net. You can learn more there says there's over 17,000 people groups in the world. So that's also the tribes, you know, in different languages. So like, for example, in the Philippines, obviously you have different people groups, yeah. you know, you have uh, those who speak Tagalog, Messiah, Messiah. Messiah, yeah, all of that. So, you know, and then you got tribal people, all of that. So, so you know, that's what he's talking about and everybody, in the world needs to hear the gospel. Matthew 24, 14 says that the gospel of the kingdom will be preached as a witness throughout the world to all the nations, and then the end will come. So yes. that's my goal. I want, I want to see that happen. How is that going to happen? It's not just going to happen through me because there's no way that I can do all that. And obviously there are so many more people that are already involved in ministry, active. But it's also by raising up others, teaching, discipling people so they know the three things that I really feel are important for people to learn. Number one is they need to learn who God is. And then number two, they need to know their identity in in God. In other words, that they're, what does God say about you? Who Who did he create you to be? Um, the, what was his intention for creating you? And then thirdly, what is your purpose? What is your mission? Well, the Bible answers all of those questions. And God wants to reveal that to you. Jesus came to reveal who the Father was. Then he came to show people how they relate to him, that we're his children, and, and that he wants a relationship. And then lastly, Jesus gave us, this is your purpose, to worship God, to love him, to love your neighbors yourself, but also to, to go to the, to the people, to share the love of God, to share the story about the gospel 
gospel means good news about what he did and how he died. So that's my goal. And I, I want to see that happen. Um, but I realize we need the power of, of the Lord. So miracles, you know, when you read the story, the gospels, you read about Jesus life, there are miracles that happen yes. and they're still happening. They're still happening. We, we, have been seeing miracles we've seen miracles for years and we're still seeing miracles and it's happening and you know i know i saw read a comment earlier um someone said why am i crying i'll yes. tell you why you're crying is because that's the love of god that's the presence of god you're sensing yeah there you go that's the presence of god god loves you it's not just like this stale sanitized you know religion this is a personal emotional, like passionate love relationship that he has for you as a, as the perfect father that loves his children. So hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. Thank you, pastor. Um, again, thank you for reiterating that, that part where it is our responsibility to talk about it. Amen. Right. Uh, you know, I always uh, talk about that because I know people who, you know, who wonder, hey, why are you talking about stuff like that? As you mentioned, <laughs> you know, you're not you're not a priest or you're not this or you're not that. Like they, they uh, feel that you have to have a certain qualification. Right. And I guess, you know, I, it's just a lack of not really getting to know God, Jesus, right. not enough for seeking, you know, not enough reading of the Bible. So, yeah, um, exactly. Especially and, and, the, the reading of the Bible part, because yes. you know what people, many people, unfortunately, they, they only know what others have told them about God. But I want to challenge people. Don't, don't just say, well, this is what somebody told me about God. You know, whether it was a priest or whatever. No. What does the Bible say? Because the Bible yes. is God's word. Okay. And what does the Bible say about him? And and that's so important. And 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 that's what, that's what it means to seek his face, right? And it's really our responsibility. Uh, we're given the choice to choose, mm -hmm. so we we need to really get to know him on our own. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and everything else is the fellowshipping is is of course necessary as well to grow, right? You know, to be more mature, but. Um, yeah, it's something that I always talk about in every show um, mm, because it, it 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 gets frustrating when uh you know when people say Jesus is religion yeah. when it's not he's yeah. not um okay so now we probably already talked about this but you might have something more to add on to this can you give us advice or give those who don't believe advice or even those who, who believe, but are, I guess, lost or, you know, distracted, mm -hmm. how to face testings in their life. Sure. Um, well, yeah, I mean, Jesus said this. He said, in the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. That's in John 16, 33. Then in, I think it's John 4, and John, elsewhere in John, he said this. He, he talked about, you know, he, the peace, he said, I give you my peace, not as the world gives. Okay. So basically there's going to be trouble. There's going to be difficulties in life. Things happen all the time, you know, and some, some of the things are, are devastating, very tragic and traumatic, traumatic things that happen to our, in our lives. But ultimately we have to come to the place where we recognize that God is there for us. You know, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is a comforter. That's what one translation says. It's the Greek word parakletos, which means one who comes alongside us to walk with us, to journey with us, to comfort us, to strengthen us, to counsel us, to give us wisdom. That's the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity Holy Spirit is God. So we need to have that type of relationship with God. And no matter where you're at, like if you've been just really busy, because I know that obviously people in the Philippines, 
I don't work a lot. There's like you guys work a lot and you work hard. You're very hardworking people. And and one of the things that I've seen, and I've you know, obviously other countries too, is just like it becomes like I don't have time for God. Yeah. And and the fact is we all have time for God and we have to put him first. And yes. one scripture that Jesus said this, he was talking about people that were like, they were frustrated. They were, were running all over the place, just trying to make ends meet. How are we going to survive? How are we going to get through this? And he said, guess what? Every hair in your head is numbered. The father knows. Don't worry about your life, what you're going to eat. He's, well, you know, all of that stuff. He said this, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. In other words, put God first and make him the priority and he'll take care of you. He'll make sure you have the stuff you need. And, and that's what he said in Matthew 6, 33. So I want to just say this, guys. You cannot justify saying, well, I'm just too busy. No. Every one of us has a certain amount of time we have one life to live and we have to put God first. And when we do, he's going to help you. He's going yeah, to, absolutely. he's going to bless you. He'll take care of you. He'll make sure you have everything you need. You know, that doesn't mean we sit around and do nothing, but it means that all of a sudden we're like, God, okay, give me wisdom. How do I, how do I do this? You know? And then, one of the other things the Bible talks about when we put God first, put him first with our time, our relationships, you know, with our with our energy, even our money. Uh, when we when we do that, then God says this. He says, I will command the blessing on your life is what he says. And it's just like God says, put me first in the natural. You got, I don't know how I'm going to do this, how I'm going to make time to, you know, to pray, read the Bible, time to go to church and fellowship with other believers or whatever. But if you put God first, he's going to work everything out for you. He's going to take care of you. And it is an act of faith. We were talking about faith earlier. You know, he says, test me. The Bible actually where God says, test me. Will I not open the windows of heaven? Will I not pour out a blessing? You know, in other words, put me first, watch what happens. I'll take care of you. And, and he does, he's true to his word. So that's, I would say, you know, just get, get back with the Lord. If you, if you once were walking with him and you really knew the Lord and had that relationship, just please go back to the Lord. Just come back to him. He loves you. He wants to bring you or turn your life around and put you back, get you back on track. Secondly, if you've just kind of been raised in a religious environment, you know about God, but you don't know him personally. He wants to have that relationship with you. Just call on the name of Jesus. Ask him to reveal himself to you. And then thirdly, if you are uh, a disciple of Jesus Christ right now and you're following the Lord, you know what? Just keep going and, and just trust him more. Trust him more because he's, you know, trust him with all of your heart. Don't hold back anything from him. Put all in. Just go all in, you know, and watch what all he in. does. He's going he's gonna to just reveal himself more uh, powerfully to you. He's going to take care of you, your family, all your needs. He's good. God, you know, he's, Jesus said this. He said, if we, he was talking to the people in his day, and he said, if you, uh, and he said this, like basically to parents or to fathers, he said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good yeah. gifts to his children? So if we love our children and we want to take care of them and we're sinful people, you know, what about a perfect God who's love? You know, yes. he's, the, he's the personification. He's the quintessential definition of love. He, he wants to take care of us. How much more will he take care of us? And, 
And that's what Jesus taught. So just trust him. Um, and, and one of the things you said, Jug, that is so, so true. People say, well, what qualifies you to talk about God? You're not a priest or you're not a teacher of religion or whatever. Well, technically, Jesus wasn't either. He never went to their seminaries or their school. Yeah. You know, he wasn't trained formally as, as you know, a religious leader. And the people he selected to go and yeah. preach the gospel to the nations of the world were not professional, you know, clergy. They weren't priests or whatever. They yes. were like fishermen and tax collectors. And, yes, and, and even know, Paul. And he, and he chose women like, you know, Mary Magdalene. And read about her. And, and yes. the first person he appeared to when he rose from the dead was Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene, yes. Yeah. And, oh. um, you know, some people don't know that. Uh, well, when I grew up as a Catholic, I didn't really know that part unless I just missed that lesson. You know, what when Mary Magdalene was the first person he appeared to. I I must have missed that part. Yeah. I just found that out as an adult. Yeah. Um, you know, I learned a lot as a going to Catholic school. I went to St. Paul, you oh. know, Paul, the apostle. So it's a very uh popular Catholic school system right. here, a university system. And um the the, the one of the Bible quotes that I will always remember from that is seek ye first the kingdom of God. Right. So I'll always remember that part. And, right. and, um, and everything that you mentioned, everything is logical in the Bible. Um, you know, uh, Jesus wants love, simplicity, humility, compassion. He shows all that mm -hmm. he, he, he wasn't prideful or, so the apostles he chose were even just like Paul. Paul, after he arose, he already ascended. Paul, the the religious man, who right. even who even killed, right? You know, persecuting Christians. That's right. You know, and 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 he still chose him. So, you know, this is where a lot of people I I, I would see on Facebook only God can judge me right. because nobody really should be judging. Right. Um, because the love of God is really for everybody Amen. because we're all sinners. So yeah. just because we don't, you know, we're not a killer and the other's a killer. So yeah. it's not being weighed that way that, oh, he, he's sinning more. You know, it's not like that. Yeah. Um, Amen. So thank you for emphasizing all of that, Pastor. Um, I forgot to mention compassion uh, with God earlier when I was mentioning how he was just and fair and, and uh, you know, graceful. And really showed us love, the people from from the Jews to the Gentiles, from the very beginning in the Old Testament, he's never failed uh, to really show compassion. And Amen. how can one be compassionate if there's no love in the heart? Right. You know, I mean, it, um, and the relationship again, um, it has to be intentional to give time to the Lord on a daily basis. I I go through that. You know, I, I go through that struggle, you know, making sure that I have a, that I, I, I a lot time for the Lord every day. You know, I'm getting better at it now. <laughs> um, but that's always a, a cop out reason, in my opinion. It's always going to be there. Uh, people right. are always going to be busy. And even if you're not busy, you're always going to find something else to do because you feel that you're not really getting anything back. Right. By, but see, um, if, you are starting to be transformed and you have this fire in you. You know, as you mentioned earlier during our conversation, God draws you to him. If if that switch has been turned on, yeah. you're going to be intentional and in taking and putting that schedule on your calendar every single day. Of yeah. really, you know, really putting in that time to read his word and, yeah. you know, whatever it is you have to do to, to really grow in him, grow up your relationship with him. And I, I can only hope that these shows that we're doing will encourage people. And, and it's yeah. difficult, very difficult for us, Pastor. <laughs> yeah. It's difficult, but I wanted to mention this before the show ended and, um, quickly. There's this show on TV, very popular in Hollywood, okay? Um, it's called Vampire Diaries, okay. you know? The originals. Um, 
it, it's part of those vampire movies that came out. Okay. One of the actors there, one of the actors there is an actual Christian who is very active on Instagram. Okay. And he is amazing. You know, I never thought of that. Maybe that's me, the judgmental side of me, you know, amazed that how can this actor from Hollywood who played a vampire in a very, very popular TV series, mm. a couple of a couple of TV series, that is. Yeah. Never knew that he was a Christian. He's really a Christian. I'm going to show you his page, and you're going to be right. amazed at the way he, he witnesses and really shares his testimonies. And he teaches every day, every single day. He creates stories and posts on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And every time he gets um, interviewed, you know, for, for film, when he, when he uh, promotes his movies, he always talks about Jesus, Pastor. So God is using him. Right. You know, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, God uses everyone where, where they're at in their journey as well. You know, I mean, I think that uh, we're all growing and we're all in a, a learning curve, so to speak. And uh, God is merciful to us. And, you know, so anyway, I know for me, there were things that I used to do when I first became a Christian that I no longer do. And so that's the way I look at it with people. Yeah. But I think it's all going back to what you said earlier, grace, understanding grace. Grace is not just God being compassionate and merciful to us. Certainly it involves that element yes. and aspect, yes. but it's also God giving us the desire and the power to do what pleases him. I think it's um, Philippians chapter two, verse 12. It actually says, God works in us to will and to do his good pleasure. Another translation in English says, God works in us, giving us the desire and the power to do what pleases him. So that's grace. And, and that's what I just want to bring out to everyone. Like we have people that, like, man, you know what? This thing with God, like, I got to get my life together. And when I get my life together one day, then I'll, <laughs> then I'll, you know, then I'll make time for God. I'll, I'll get back to God and, and, uh, you know, but I got to get everything put together in my life, first of all. And that's not true. That's a lie from the devil, man. Like, don't think that way. That's that type of thinking is not who God is. God is saying, yeah. look, first of all, you're not going to get everything put together in your life. You know that. Come on, don't lie to yourself. <laughs> right? yeah. Like yeah. how many years <laughs> has it been that you've been saying that and you're still don't have everything, you know, put together. Um, yeah. So so that's the one thing. Secondly, come to him just the way you are, because he loves you as you are. But he loves you Amen. so much. He loves you. The, he loves you for who you are as a person, as his son, his daughter. But also, he loves you enough to change you. He's not going to leave you the way you are. He's going to actually help you grow and change. And he's going to give you the desires and the power. Like you say, well, how do I love and forgive this person? They've done, you know, such terrible things to me. And, and that's, that's a real challenge. A lot of people struggle with that. We've all had that happen and it's yeah. difficult. Well, God says, look, I'm going to give you the love. I'm going to, I'm going to give you the strength to, to forgive them. And so I love that about him. It says in Romans chapter five, the love of God is poured out into our hearts by the Holy spirit. Yes, amen. The love of God is poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. The word for love there is agape, or and and it means a special kind of God love, an unconditional love, a supernatural love. It's not human love. Yes, yes, amen. And the, the importance of the the Holy Spirit, um, absolutely. Which you know, thank you for talking about the Holy Spirit because it's something that I feel is not understood completely by you know a lot of people still and if only people would really 
mm-hmm. get to know that part of the Bible about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Right. You know, who's not going to want to be able to get those gifts? Right. You know, I mean, yeah. if, 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 so what are those gifts, right? The part of that is, you know, if you were, if you used to be hot tempered, you'd be patient, you'd have peace and joy, mm-hmm. gentleness, right? Yeah. Um, the fruit know, of the uh, spirit, yeah. Yeah, the fruits of the spirit. And so basically, that's how much God loves us that right. he, Jesus came. And then when Jesus um, ascended back into heaven, he said, Don't worry, the Holy Spirit's going to stay with all of you. Mm-hmm. He's gonna be there to guide you, you know. And 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 they all, in the Bible it also said God said that everybody will have the opportunity uh, to know about the gospel of Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. you know, as you mentioned earlier. So we're all given the chance to choose, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and and another thing uh, before we, you know, there's still five minutes. Um, the experience, you know, learning experiential uh you know that's i think that's where a lot of people start to really change when they experience it you know but how are you going to experience it if you're not going to do the work (laughs) you know so you know you know how people are like oh i don't know i don't know what they're talking about um you know and then they're so afraid or you know the enemy's just doing it work in their hearts and their minds but how are you going to see and experience what the lord can do in your life if you're not going to give it a chance right right and once you experience that once you experience his love in your life you're really going to want to keep on going and you're going to be bold about it and really talk about it and um it takes time yeah and there you know it depends on our personality but Hey, that's why I think one thing that we need to remember, we now have StreamYard and Zoom and we're all stuck at home. And I don't know if you know, Pastor, we're back to ECQ here tomorrow, like tonight. Oh, wow. Really? Midnight, yeah, uh, for for a week. So we're what, back to ECQ. Well, so what what does that mean? I mean, I know. Um, it's, yeah, I it's know. The, it's, it's the highest level. The yeah, highest it's the, level. Wow. the highest level of uh, quarantine. So. It was like exactly like a year ago this happened. We right. were at ECQ. So we have curfews from 6 o'clock p.m. till 5 a.m. starting tomorrow, Monday. And it, and it, and that's happening during Holy Week. So, you know, here in oh, the Philippines, wow. here in the Philippines, it's always been culture and tradition to go, you know, to the beaches. Okay. It's like spring break in the States, right? Right, right. You know, instead of... You know how in Israel it's the Passover, right? Yes. Here it's Holy Week, so yeah. people go to the beach. So now nobody can go to the beach, right? right. <laughs> so here's the opportunity now to like really utilize the tools that we have and just be yeah. intentional and getting yeah. to know the word. And um, how long is the, the ECQ for? Any, any idea? April fourth, they said a okay. week. So we'll see. Well, let's see if it's actually going to be flattening the curve, um, right. you know, because the cases have been higher more than ever here. The daily confirmed cases are like over 10,000 now. Wow. That's the most, if Every day. I remember correctly. Is that daily? Um, it's, it's like gradually going up. The last time I checked, it went up to over 10,000 confirmed case. When last year, the most that I remember was probably 7,000. Something like that, eight thousand. So now they say because of the new, you know, strain, the new variant, it's worse. Yeah. So, yeah. The so brain, for sure. This is actually uh, uh, the perfect week. Um, let's get to know the Lord more this week. Yeah, there right? you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's Holy Week. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I'm done with all my questions, Pastor. Uh, is there okay. anything else that you wanted to add? Please go ahead. No, I just would it be all right if I just pray uh, for yes. everyone? Yes, absolutely. Please do so. Thank okay. you. Yeah, I mean, obviously, people that are on the live stream right now viewing uh, or viewing the live stream, and then those who will watch the replay yes. as well. Yeah, I yes. just wanted to say, as we talked about knowing God personally, 
knowing Jesus as your Savior and Lord, you know, it comes by just calling on the name of the Lord, saying, Lord, forgive me, come into my life. I believe you died for my sins and you rose again that I might be justified, I might be free, might be forgiven and brought back to uh, a relationship with the Father. And then Jesus said, and you know, I will, Acts 2.38, repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So that's what I want to just pray as you repent, which means change your thinking. Don't think like a, uh, a sinner and don't think like a religious person. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> think what God says. You know, the Bible says, let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. In other words, what, what does Jesus think about you? What does he say about you? So and then he says you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So I just want to pray that I want to pray for people to really encounter God and to even be filled with the Holy Spirit right now. If you're watching this, maybe just put your hand on your chest. And, and just pray with me, okay? So here, here's what I'll just pray after me. Just repeat after me, okay? Father God, I just thank you in the name of Jesus Christ that you died, uh, that you sent your son Jesus into the world, that he would die and rise to life again so that I can be forgiven, that I can be free. And I ask you to forgive me right now and to come into my life. I ask you, Lord, to change my life. And I ask you, Lord, to reveal yourself to me. Let me know your power and your grace. And Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Now let me pray for you. Father, I pray for every person watching this broadcast right now, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would reveal yourself to them by your Holy Spirit. Jesus, come in a powerful way. And Lord, I pray for forgiveness. I pray for cleansing. I pray, Lord, that people would just fall in love with you, Lord. Draw them to your side, Father. Draw them to Jesus. Draw them, Lord God, to the place where they know who you are and they walk with you, Lord. And I pray that you would just send the power of the Holy Spirit right now. Just say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit right now. And I say, in Jesus' name, receive the power of the Holy Spirit right now. In Jesus' name, just receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Be healed. If you're sick, I command sickness and disease to leave your body. I command high blood pressure to go. I command, in Jesus' name, all sickness and disease to leave right now. And I speak healing because Jesus heals the sick. Jesus heals the sick. And so we command the blessing of God in the name of Jesus on your life, that you may know him and that you might walk with him and that you might experience his grace and his mercy in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen, 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 amen. amen. Yeah, just amen. keep it. Just keep worshiping God. If you are part watching this, you may be like, wow, I'm just sensing the Lord. I feel God right now. Then, yeah, just maybe you want to get alone for a little bit and just pray and just talk to the Lord and let him let him just move in your life. And, yeah, find a good church. I know things are closed down, as you said, with the quarantine restrictions. But, yeah, yes. Zoom, get online, uh, <laughs> connect yeah. with with Jug, and we've got things going on too. You can always be a part of that. We'd love for that to happen as well. I've got lots of teachings and sermons yes. on yes. YouTube, uh, podcasts, um, my website, awakenations.org. It's all free. Just go there. And I think uh, um, it's so much easier now to, you know, hear all these words because of true. technology. It's true. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. There's always a way if we're if we're really gonna wanna, you know, grow or accept Jesus and grow this relationship. Amen. As you as you mentioned, there's podcasts everywhere, <laughs> you yeah. know, videos. Of course, you have to, you know, really listen and learn, you know. Right. So yeah. anyway, thank you for the prayer, Pastor. Thank you for the time. Um yes. I don't know. Well, did I interrupt you? Were you still saying no. something? No, not at all. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
All right. Well, to everybody who, you know, spend your evening with us, thank you so much. And to those watching from the States, you know, Pastor Steve and everybody else. And um, all of you who have commented here, thank you. Thank you. Please do share this video. Yeah. Um, Ber Bernard, my friend Bernard De Castro, uh, will be praying for Sam, my, my good friend Sam, who is in the hospital. Uh, um, okay. So yes, um, yes, this video is accessible anytime um, here on Facebook and on, and also on YouTube, and mm. I'll be uploading the audio on uh, Mixcloud. That's all I have right now. Okay. But um, that's what Pastor Glenn said, guys. Please do check out his teachings. Um, he's everywhere in social media. Um, you really, you're really gonna learn a lot. It's part of you know, growing as a Christian, if you want to really build that relationship yeah. with God, with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, Amen. make it intentional, do it enough with the excuses. The excuses are planted in your head and heart by the enemy. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. It, you know, think about it, guys. If we have that desire, we want to do this, right? But then something happens. Oh, oh no, I ended up watching this instead. All right. That's always the enemy being very like happy because he succeeded at that particular moment. That doesn't okay. have to go on and on. Let's just make it intentional. A lot the time that Jesus wants, that Amen. God wants. Amen. So yeah, and 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 that's me, the imperfect person, the child of Jesus, the child of God, I should say. Um Amen. You know, a follower of Jesus sharing what I know and what I've experienced in my life. Thank you so much, Pastor Glenn. And uh, I must say that I've learned so much from our weekly sessions or, you know, the Wednesday sessions that uh, we, Wednesday over here and Tuesday over there, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, my, my, yes, mom. It is awakenations.org is Pastor Glenn's uh, official website. Oh, that's your mom. Yes. Oh, wow. There. I told her to tune in because I told her that you are, you know, the the head pastor of the church that i started attending in uh, 2017. wow and of course there's a lot more god others bless. you know uh, god bless Carlo ma and god bless yes. ma'am <laughs> and i i always uh invite her to watch and then uh, 90 percent of the time she's been watching the show oh, so that's wow. good okay yeah cool. um i'd like to thank everybody who has been um the reason connecting me with pastor glenn and pastora Pastor Lynn, of course, that's Carlo, that's Brother Jeff, of course. And of course, uh, to those in Cavite who I miss, you know, Pastor Pastora Ruby, Sis Solis, yeah. Pastor Joel, and of course, Pastor John, thank you for watching, uh, tuning in. And uh, yeah. if, I, if, if you're watching and you didn't comment, uh, yeah. that's the reason I'm not greeting you because you didn't comment. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's 10.07, so I'm done. Um, thank you so okay. much, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Here you uh, go. Last co last comment. Yes. Yes, moms. All right. Thank yeah. you. Please do share this video. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah. I'm going to play one last song to end the show. Thank you, Pastor Glenn. God bless. You're welcome. Now, thank you. Have a great all right. evening. Thank Sleep you so well. much. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. Bye-bye.
Welcome all people in this world This is a song you never heard You must hear it then and now It's something landing from above You never know what's really coming home Are you so sure what will be happening? Peace and purity Hope and Trinity There's something out there for you and me There's something out there for us to see So we unite to all the countries And every day is like a miracle You gotta learn how to use it Every day is like a blessing from the Lord of above. Every day is such a gift that God wants you to receive. And every day is such a surprise, you never know if you'll still rise. You gotta embrace all the blessings. And cherish even all the littlest things All of us are free Free yourselves from sin Free yourselves from sin You gotta give more than you receive You have to work more than you will eat Respect with all love and humanity yeah. Every day is like a miracle You gotta learn how to keep it And every day is like a blessing From the Lord of above Every day is like a blessing from the Lord. 